So we've got this this batten around the above the top plank, and that's screwed to the the moulds. So obviously, leaving the moulds in gives us something to fasten this to. And then it's only when we we need access to the ribs close to the position of the moulds that we take the moulds out and put the final few ribs in. All boat builders do things slightly differently. I, I like to leave the moulds in, get the majority of the ribs in, and then only take the moulds out when we need to. Basically because these are, are class racing boats and the class would like them all to be the same. If you take the moulds out and then start bending in ribs, it can distort the shape of the boat and you can end up with a wider boat, a narrower boat and that sort of thing. So I like to keep the shape as, as close to the moulds as I can. So we've taken the moulds out of the forward section, done all the ribs there, taken the mould out of the after section, done all those ribs. We're just left with three ribs here, two clear of the mould and then this mould will have to come out to put the final rib in place. And then when we take that mould out we'll take our batten off the shear and uh, everything's cleared away then ready for the next stage. Uh, one of the things to keep an eye on as, we do, as we're going is the, the spacing of the ribs. Hopefully we've been pretty good on spacing our our plank nails, uh, spacing them fore and aft. They aren't going to be perfect but they're all going to be fairly equal and so our ribs come up in between the plank nails. And the easy way of just having a guide for that Our ribs are six and a half inches apart, measured on the keel, as they come up the side of the boat because the, the sort of circumference of the top plank is longer than the keel, they actually splay a little bit. But just a, a scrap of timber and a pen, saves so messing around with a rule all the time. Mark the centre of our piece of wood and then we want six and a half inches between those two marks. Then using our piece of wood as a guide it saves leaning on your rule and trying to work out what half of fifteen and three quarter inches is. It's easy just to use that as a guide with either the centre mark on the plank nail to show us where the ribs go or to put the outside marks on the plank nails and to put our rib halfway between them. standard square shanked copper boat nails. Uh, these are inch and three quarters. We could get away with inch and a half nails, uh, but I like to make sure that we've got enough to poke through the rove, which is the small washer that gets hammered onto the point when it comes through the rib the end gets snipped off and then it gets riveted over. These are 12 gauge copper nails. The gauges in nails are the wire gauge which is different to the screw gauge uh, and the higher the gauge in a nail the thinner it is whereas with a screw a 10 is thicker than an 8 in a copper nail a 10 is thinner than an 8 just to 
keep your brain working. And because we haven't hot nailed the boat, hammering the nails in when the ribs are hot, we, we've got a chance now to unclamp the ribs from the, the batten at the top, which we've just done. We've just sanded up the surface of the rib to make it a bit cleaner. And then we'll clamp it in place, drill out through, nails in, roves on, snip off, tap, 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 rivet the end of the nail over. What we need is a special little tool. It's not really that special, it's a lump of metal with a little hole in the end. F so that we can hammer our rove over the point of the nail and the point of the nail will disappear into there and we can hammer our rove down tight on the rib. A pair of snips for snipping off the end of the nail. The copper's quite soft. Here's a few ends of nails that have already been snipped off. That's the, the sort of thing you end up with. And they just snip the nails off. A fairly light little hammer with a rounded end. Uh, if it's too heavy a hammer, when you're riveting the nail, the, the guy on the outside gets a, gets a bit of a smack, really. He's holding a, a dolly, which is a, just a, a flat-ended piece of metal, really. This is an old piece of propeller shaft that's been turned down with a nice, nice smooth end, slightly curved, so it, you don't have edges that dent the planking and this is held fairly snugly against the nail head on the outside so that when I'm riveting the nail it doesn't just slide out through the hole. Obviously we need a drill for drilling the holes. Uh, we want the nails to be a nice tight fit really um, and it's always finding the right size drill bit that gives us a decent hole that will guide the nail in, but it's not too slack that it won't actually grip the, the timbers together while we're riveting. And the general rule is the diameter of the drill bit is the flat of the nail, the measurement of the flat of the nail, so that's about sort of two and a half millimetres in this case. If you're drilling through hardwood, uh, constantly or, or continuous hardwood, you may want to increase the size of the drill bit to the diagonal, diagonal measurement of the nail. But this is a good size drill for this nail. It takes a bit of hammering in and it's not split in the wood, so that's, uh, that's all you can hope for, really. Now, for two-thirds of the boat, where the, the ribs are continuous and they run from gunnel to gunnel, they go down over the keel, the first thing we do is to put a nail down through the centre of the rib into the hog and into the keel to hold it in place as you can see there and there. Where we come to the area where there's the slot for the centre plate, obviously we can't do that and we don't really want to do that. Um, so we're relying on the, the first nails, first rivets through the hog and the garboard plank to hold it in place. But because we're using this method of the batten around the top and clamping the rib in place. What we can do is to get get the rib back in pretty much where it's going, get it roughly in place and pretty similar to when we actually steamed the ribs in themselves, 
we can just put a bit of weight on the rib, give it a tap down, tighten up the clamp onto the batten. Same the other side. And that just pushes the rib out against the planking pretty much everywhere we hope it should do. But it gives it a bit of friction as well, so it's not just flailing around um, if like this one, which, which has only just been loosely clamped in place. You know, trying to keep that one in position is going to be a nightmare. But this one that we've tapped down, we can now just adjust with the help of our spacing stick to just to make sure that it, it comes halfway between our plank nails. So we'll start down at the keel do maybe three or four nails, rivet them and then work up and as we work up if the rib wants to pull out to the planking more then we can just slacken off the clamp for the last section and ensure that the rib is out against the plank. So just with a check of the position and it always helps just to sort of take a step back and look at it and if it looks pretty good it may not be millimetre perfect but if it looks okay that's really what you're after. So drilling through being conscious of what's happening on the outside if you like. On the outside we've got the keel and uh, driving the nail in close to the keel is never easy so we can put a little bit of angle on it and keep it three eighths or half an inch away from the keel it'll make the nail driving easier. Drill the hole through and then we need something heavy to back up the rib while the nail goes in. Fortunately there's a nice heavy battery on here. So you just take some weight on the rib and wait for the nail to be driven in. Drill a few more to so then if we're happy that that ribs in place and is tight against the planking we can move on. Yeah. 